Hi, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Hey, Martine. Hi, Paula. Hey, Ruth. Shalom. Ruth, I can just about see you from here. Hi, Natalie. Oh, hi, Annie. Good to see you. Hey, Jenny. Nice to see you back. Um, I'm, hi, Chloe. Oh, I'm thrilled. Happy Sunday, everyone. Hi, Tarek. Um, good morning, Lynn. Uh, I was also, good morning, Donna. It is very, very, very windy on the rock, everybody. Um, and I've been playing a bit of a game dancing around with reception, but I wanted to get up here for all of you. Um, oh, hi, Faye. Nice to see you back. Hey, big hugs. Good morning, Lynn. Well, Lynn, I'm almost waving to you out in the ocean. Ladies and gentlemen, um, <laughs> hi, everybody. Nice to see everyone. Yeah, I'm back in the mountains, which is good. Uh, although in the end, we took the cable car up here, which I didn't want to, but parking was too hard of it, <laughs> and then sort of ran out of time. But um, Lorraine, hi there. And I don't know if Finn Toomey has signed on yet, but I know he's awake, so I put this one on specifically for that kind of time. So hi, Beverly. So ladies and gentlemen, hola, Sarita. Um, hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Deb, 4.30 a.m., good morning. So if you haven't met me before, hello, my name's Patrick Toomey. I live high in the mountains. I don't live in these mountains, but I am, of course, hey, Bonnie, but I am up on a limestone mountain, just like we are up in the Canadian Rockies. So I am here in Gibraltar, in the rock. Um, it is a super windy, stormy day out here, um, but fabulous and beautiful. I'd like to introduce you again to my friend Richard, who's here with me. And uh, Richard came down and... Richard's actually got the backpacks on because the monkeys will actually attack us, right? And so he's playing the special role of keeping the, the monkeys away, which is really nice. Of, I did put my earphones in because of the wind. So a few times there's just no point in me talking because of the noise. But if I'm going to do a reveal, I think probably the reveal to do would be this one just out here. Have a look at this. I am down on the southern end of Gibraltar, about 2.7 square miles, 6.7 six square kilometers. This is the world famous rock of Gibraltar. I am looking out towards the east and there is the mighty, well, there's the Spanish coast. You're looking up to Marbella. Um, oh, Leslie, it's just such a, it, I, we keep talking about sort of what a weird place it is too. I got up this morning and was sort of rereading the history of it. You know, there have been 14 complete sieges on this. Now I have really quite deep pacifist roots, so I do struggle with so much war. But don't worry, I am going to be able to show you around. I'll just tease you for a minute here because I have the Zoom, everyone. Look at those Barbary monkeys, part of the Makake family, were probably introduced when the Arabs came over here in the, the 700, 711 it was taken. But they're here and they're gorgeous and they're funny, honey. But also they can be pretty aggressive. So that is just lovely to see. But uh, they will pinch things. That's why my dear friend Richard here is carrying the bag. Because I'm holding the gimbal. Uh, and there's signs everywhere that say fine for 4,000 pounds um, if you feed them. So that's really good. But here, here's the a bit of a tea these days, you know, offshore banking and so forth. Um, but an interesting mix. And by the way, for anyone on board who happens to, uh, to follow the Islamic thing, let me just keep walking. Yeah, there. I should be just coming back into a bit better reception here. Yeah, it is there. It's a bit better now. So, it honestly, I have spent. Poor Richard, I've been dragging him around everywhere. But have a look at the cliff face. The highest point is up there. I'm sort of hoping to walk up there with all of you. But I'm going to watch the reception, see how I see how I go as we get down through here. But um, so let me keep walking here. And I think, oh, the wind is just roaring up here. Um, yeah, 4,000 pound fine. And of course, they use the broke pounds here. What's the Gibraltar pound? Well, it's pound sterling, but they have their own coins. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Now I think my reception's coming back good and strong again. Um, dolphin watching and the other thing that they have out in the base here are orcas. Uh, so I might do a video later at Europa Point. We went down there and spent a bunch of time, but it was so windy, I just couldn't do any kind of a video. Have a look what's going on here. Um, 
Uh, I don't have the zoom on right now. No, nope, but I do have it. And if I zoom in, for example, have a look at this. So that is, we are no longer looking at the Mediterranean. You are looking out to the Atlantic Ocean out there. We are standing on one of the pillars of Hercules. Those are the fast ferries that go across to Tangier. It's about, about 13 kilometers, um, 8.9 or something nautical miles across to Africa. So let's keep going up and we will look across all the way to Africa. Oh, I tell you, I just so wish we had one more day and take the ferry over there. I was just concerned about all, the, all of the controls that they have now going on with um, COVID. But there you are looking across to Africa, Ceuta and Tangiers. So Ceuta is um, an amazing place, uh, but it's a, it's a Spanish hold up. So we're standing here in Britain. Um, I'm showing full, 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 full reception right now. Although it is, uh, it is bouncing around. Isn't that view incredible? Let me just zoom in for you for a second. So you look out to Ceuta, um, have a look. So you're looking now at Africa. Hey, Manny, isn't that just spectacular? I'm Valerie in Florida. Anyone who's over in North America is here. Thank you for getting up so early. I wanted to time one out so that everyone in Australia as well could come along and have a view. I was hoping to see my kid sign on, but I guess he's maybe out doing stuff. But if we look out the distance, you go around, there's still lots of Spain here. You'd make your way down around the coast towards um, Cadiz. And Cadiz was the outlet of the one navigable river that travels through all of Spain. And that is where all that money and all that wealth left from Portobello in what is now Panama and made its way across. Um, the pirate Henry Morgan, <laughs> I think we should zoom across, thanks, Ian. The pirate Henry, not Henry Morgan, excuse me, Sir Francis Jake came and burnt Cadiz to the ground. And that's why the ships would carry on up to Seville. And that's why Seville really welcomed most of the wealth from the Americas, from the Spanish holdings in South America. Um, Deb, it is 2 a.m., but my, but my boy is down in Brisbane right now, you see, in Australia. So, um, But as I just come around, I can curve back into this bay. So that's Algeciras. And it is fun when you drive down the coast here, you drive along, you see signs written in Arabic. It's telling people where they can get into the, the boat. So, yeah, Helen. It's, um, yeah, walking our spotter. So we stayed across because it was cheaper, to be honest truth. And we walked across. And I want to try and get a video a little later, if we're lucky enough, of a plane coming in because they literally closed the road. When you take off from here, they have to really loop around uh, because they have to get to a certain altitude before they go into Spanish airspace. It's a fascinating uh, reality living here. But going back through some of the history. So the biggest siege was in the late 1770s. Um, and that was the biggest siege that went on here. And it's, it's exactly like the siege of, of Quebec City, too, and all these stories where they came in with these battering ships. But, oh, I'm the brutality of the history of fighting for this. But because you have control over the Mediterranean and the entrance and access to the African continent up here, one can understand why this is so strategically important. Um, so, um, yes, we did the time change here in Spain last week, too. So, it's, <clears throat> so I'm... Uh, I'm eight hours from home right now, but this is fun because I'm coming up now. I expect when I get up higher, it will get super, super windy. I'm getting up to the highest point here on the rock. It's over 400 meters at the very top, but right through here, these shipping channels, 50% of the world's maritime traffic crosses through here. Is that not just a stunning number? And just think two weeks ago, I was taking people for a walk down in Panama as well, which is just so incredible. And have a look at, I'll give you one more little zoom here with the ferries just coming in through here. But for years, so when the Spanish Civil War kicked off, uh, it is so busy, Kathleen. When the Spanish Civil War kicked off in 1936, and what a tragic, tragic war that was too, another 250,000 people uh, lost their lives. And then, then Spain descended into a fascist dictatorship for 45 years. Well, they closed the border of Gibraltar and that's when they built the airport. And so the airstrip became extremely important. And gradually, of course, they brought people over from Morocco to come and work here because Spanish couldn't travel across the border. Now the border, now they did check our passports, they even stamped us. We were having such a laugh today because we are at the most southern point of continental Europe here. These are the only wild monkeys anywhere in Europe. Yet we were stamped out of Europe when we came here today. <laughs> so all three of us were on British, or all two of us, sorry, and someone walked behind us but are on British passports um, and so the Spanish had to had to stamp us out and then <clears throat> the British just sort of said hi welcome home so that was interesting now let me just curve back around here for a second 
Um, there we see. Now, this whole thing, apes, not monkeys, that's true, but they call them monos here. Um, but this whole thing is like a giant Swiss cheese. It is all cut into different armaments all through here. So it's long and thin, and clearly the rock. Uh, just in terms of cost, you know, the cable car costs 18 pounds, another 13 just to come into this reserve. So it's a lot of money floating around here, but it is that sort of offshore. It is interesting that so much construction is going on as well. Um, I have been in the tunnels, um, uh, Cheryl, but I can't do a tour in there because, um, because I just don't get the reception once I'm inside. But have a look at this. It was very interesting, though, um, when we came across because people were out doing their Sunday morning jogs, having a good old time. And suddenly you can't go any further walking because you get to a tunnel. <laughs> so we have almost circumnavigated the, the rock today. Um, so it's, it's quite interesting. Yesterday, of course, I did the tour down in the town. Hi, Joe, and good morning. And then main Gibraltar, which is really, and I did Main Street yesterday, it was just down to the left. Of course, then you have the little harbor through there. The line, and this is the line or the city that is over on the Spanish side, we're staying, La Linea de la Concepcion, where we're staying, uh, is literally the other side of the airport. And so much so the road has to close when the planes come in. But that line was established because that is as far as the cannons would reach, the British cannons would reach the Spanish forces. And the Spanish forces came in from both sides. I cannot imagine, you know, I've read so much, oh, there's actually a plane coming in too. I've read so much history over the years about some of these sieges, but what life must have been like if you were a soldier in one of these places. Um, yeah, Martin, I'm sort of thinking even tomorrow morning waiting for the plane, I might try and get a video. There's one coming in. I don't know if it's circling around. That looks like EasyJet. If it is, it's, uh, yeah, that's going to be coming in. Ooh, let's just see. Uh, I'm not going to be able to catch. I just can't see the airport from here really at all. Where you see that breakwater down in the distance there, that's essentially where the airport is. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? This whole, and they call themselves a country. They have quite a unique uh, accent here. Now, the really nice gentleman we're talking to this morning who was on his first day of Ramadan, his first day of fasting, was saying he spoke Arabic at home because uh, Jam- uh, Moroccan background. But uh, the, the dialect here is Yanito. But apparently it's only spoken by a couple of thousand people um anymore really the older generation but yeah there's the plane so i just take a moment here and see if this plane does actually curve around i think there's an airport now this year is too so it could well be going in there but uh but yeah plane just heading down to the distance but if it takes a hard right because say when they take off from here they have to loop out over international waters uh before they they fly away is that right then um yeah, I mean, obviously, it doesn't feel, the nice thing is it doesn't feel so military now, right? And people are totally friendly. I mean, we had dinner here last night. There was a group of um, Gibraltar, the, the Gibraltar women's dart team were having their year-end festivities. And they, and they were getting very rowdy. Um, so that was sort of a, a, fun, a fun little sense of the local community. And suddenly, it isn't nice to see that we actually have a little bit of nature around us right here. Um, Cheryl, I'm showing full, full, full reception, by the way. So I want to try and take you just as high as I possibly can. Um, now, I've flown previously. I've flown from here up to the UK. I'm flying, flying tomorrow on BA, but I, I remember taking you off. It's really fun to walk to an airport. I like doing that. Try and think of other places I've done that. Easter Island, I walk to the airport, I know. But have a look there is the gateway. So this is one of the pillars of Hercules. The other pillar is greatly debated. People can't quite decide uh, where it is or what it is. But we're head up, go up as high as we can, the gate's open, and then turn around and go say hi to some monkeys as well, because, you know, we have to do that while we're here. I don't know why I haven't seen any. Look at the, look at the growth. Still lovely, uh, lovely reception. Now, I expect when I get up high enough to the best views, I think the wind well, probably these are all military batteries. And of course, you know, it was taken over 1704 by the British and then ceded in perpetuity in 1713 in the Treaty of Utrecht, very significant treaty. But then it was attacked in the 1720s. But then again, the big siege in the late 1770s, and that was right around the time the United States was declaring independence. And that's why the French took the opportunity to attack Britain but the Spanish thought they could jump in and take back the rock and they didn't succeed. But that went on for years and years and years. And eventually a couple of ships came in and broke the blockade and brought supplies to the people of Gibraltar. 
They're really rather remarkable. But then it became, of course, strategically important in World War I. And then, of course, the Spanish Civil War is when Gibraltar closes itself down totally to access with Spain. And then by the time World War II comes along, suddenly this airport was really important. Spain, of course, stayed neutral in World War II, uh, although strong, strong sympathies to the, the fascist side. So there's the town. If you joined me yesterday, it's not broken into subdivisions either. It's just run as one, uh, one political, one entity. Um, yeah, thanks, Cheryl. Um, hi, Izzy. But the main street is just down. So when you walked with me, I went in the original walled gate. You see this wall down the side of the mountain as well, which is now the road. Interestingly, this feels like a little mix. It's funny, Richard's finding it a little bit like Monaco, and I think that's very fair. And I'm also seeing a few parallels with Hong Kong. Now, Hong Kong's a lot bigger, but when you go on the south side of Hong Kong Island, of course, you see all those wealthier homes perched out in areas. Thanks, Judy. And so it is pretty fantastic. Right down, it's not quite true. Um, down around, there's an old garrison down there. Around the bottom is Europa Point, and that's where you look south. But isn't it wonderful that we're looking across to Africa right there? So obviously Eurasia, one big continent, Africa, the other, was the African plate subducting under the Mediterranean that A, caused the Mediterranean to open up, shifted an inland sea that was here in what was Southern Spain, more in Catalonia, also caused these extrusions to happen, like this limestone being thrust up. And this is so similar. And for those of you who, who watch, of course, I've done several tours up on the side of Howling Peak in the Canadian Rockies, and it's that same formation. Yeah, and I really felt uh, we're up at about, it, it's about 300. You, you Google it, it says it's 426 meters high, but I put on my app because I'm a nerd for altitude and it only had me up at about 360 meters or something. So it's about that high. Um, yeah, a little bit like San Marino too, Julia. That's a good point. Not the oldest republic in the world. Eh? But when you see these extrusions, you can actually see where, of course, the fault happened. And that was actually the subducting of the Sierra Madre further inland that pushed this limestone sheet up. If you join me in Montserrat, um, out from Barcelona, we had that feel. What do you think, Richard? Maybe we should go back down because we want to try and find some monkeys, probably. Unless we want to keep... No. Okay, we'll go back down, everyone. Um, yeah, are you liking that? <laughs> See, this is all limestone gradually turning back into crypto-organic soil. But I tell you what we'll do is uh, we could... Thanks, Kathleen. We could take a loop around the top, um, but we will uh, we'll head down and uh, just go say hi to a few a few monkeys as well because you know that's sort of part of the fun of being here um well Aaron, if we could try loop while my reception's just bouncing around i just don't know i know there's monkeys down below you see Aaron, so that's why i didn't want to sort of sort of chance it but let's see but i can get all the way back up how long i want to do for time i'm doing fine for time back up for some sharp reviews look at all this military here i love the fact that even now the um the border control is friendly and cursory let's go see some apes and i say i realize i'm saying monkeys and they're officially apes but the people here call them monos so uh in their dialect so we'll go see if we can say hi to a couple the deal is and they said is you wear your bag on your front and if the monkey jumps on your back now i have my equipment with me for doing a 360 film so that's about $2,000 worth of gear. So I really don't want a monkey to come and pull that out. <laughs> but have a look now. My reception's just bouncing around a little bit here um, at that moment, everyone. So bear with me. Imagine if this were your job to stand in here. Imagine that, and then you were being shelled. I wonder if I can just peek over the cliff. Don't get scared, by the way. I'm not nearly as close to the edge as it feels like. And there is a row of really that feel like British holiday homes right down there on the beach at the bottom. So we are now looking in the Mediterranean. We've been looking at the, um, we were looking at the Atlantic Ocean, right? As we are in the real block between the two things. So now you pass right through here, of course, and eventually make it to the Suez Canal. Um, yeah, it's lovely to see that little beach. Um, but yeah, but you know, it's funny. I've, I've only been here a few times in my life, but uh, I've never tried swimming in around here. But uh, I'm just gonna nip down past these folks for a second here. Well, yeah. All right, so let's watch the step as we go down. And sorry, the reception is bouncing around a bit, but, but it'll stick with us enough. And here comes the wind. That's the other reason I've been trying to stick on this, this one side, because the wind is coming straight out of the east today, um, howling out. It's quite nice, actually. 
Um, so, now have a look at the customs houses down there. And then, of course, these are the sort of places where you can register boats. Oh, yeah, the views are just fantastic. Leader. And the color, I, you know, because it's been a few years since I was back in the Med, it was just so much fun looking at the beautiful colors in the water. Um, right from, from Malaga, I had a lovely sunny day in Malaga. And then we had lunch yesterday in Marbella on our way down. Um, and then, uh, and then we, uh, then came down here. It was lovely here yesterday. Now it's super stormy and windy. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna get around these folks for a second here. Hey, help. <laughs> no, you're okay. Come on up. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry. It's enough. There we go. There we go. So, all right. Now you're getting a bit more of a feel of actually how much Gibraltar is expanding. Uh, I'm going to go one other presentation later today, and I thought I might walk across from the airport on that one just to do a, a whole different view again. But I had to come up here, and you can see why. And I will try and get a proper video now. Look at all the expand. I mean, this is this is re um, redeveloped land, of course. You know, it's amazing. It happens in these small. I mean, you've got all this space out there, but of course, they're not going to have it. Uh, it is remarkable to see. So cost of living in some ways is, is lower because they have a low rate of taxation down here. Um, but on the other hand, oh, sorry, everyone, the chat just froze up on me, which it does happen. Love having Zoom, but it means the chat doesn't flow through as well as one would hope. But, oh, oh, okay. Now, it's going to be very windy and noisy, but it's worth it, okay? Oh, <laughs> Careful. <laughs> there we go, everyone. Look at that. I know you beautiful creatures. Oh, aren't they just expressive? Uh, although I think that he did actually jump on that woman who just went by. So, hello, you gorgeous. That's, um, yeah, yeah, bellboy for them. Oh, hello. Lovely faces. And I love the fact that they've taken a real environmental attitude here. Um, well, so there is clearly food put out for them, but they do, they are actually wild monkeys. So I can show you where they put out fruit for them. But I, like, I remember when I was here previously, they were more aggressive. Um, and I think they've really tried to sort of crack down on that. Um, and, uh, but they can find food that grows wild here too. Remember, of course, oranges grow all over the place. Boy, this is a howling wind today. But uh, lovely super glow. Hello, there you go. Huh. Uh, there. <laughs> oh, yeah, now Richard, he's, he's going. On. <laughs> oh, 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 he just, he just jumped. Did he hurt you? No, he just jumped on Richard's back. <laughs> uh, oops, hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. All right, some of the most social creatures in the world, of course. You, you wonder, look at that. There we go. Um, yeah, it looks like I had some fermented fruit. Don't look a monk in the eye. Yeah. Well, that one was just kind of great, though. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's lovely. <laughs> um, oh, there. I remember, of course, I think everyone on our platform uh, visited, saw the snow monkeys with Eriko, and I have been to see them as well um, in Japan, and it's just one of the most delightful things to see but uh, let's just have a look i'll give you uh, a view oh is that right was, yeah i've heard that too actually have a look down at the bottom there's the road that goes around the outside of the rock so that's where you head out to the actual point and you have of course on the other side the two spanish holdout communities Ceuta, Ceuta, and Mejia. um okay jan well joanne big hugs to you Oh, now, this is where I seem to be bouncing around with my reception, but thanks, Beverly. But, um, and it is funny. So, um, last night as well, the food on the, the menu was a real fusion between sort of classic um, British pub. Now, my reception's just dropped for a minute here, everyone, so stick with us, and we'll see. We'll, I should get it just back in a second here, so just hang tight, everyone. Um, yeah, I wonder if they would, <laughs> I honestly don't know, but this is one of the plaques I wanted to try and, um, next flight's in 21 minutes, I won't make that one, Cheryl, thanks for looking, 
<laughs> Plus, we found parking and paid for a few hours. Do you know my gimbal reset itself? I have to reset it. Um, but I'll have to. There we are. There we go. So 500 Spanish soldiers climbed the east face of the rock in 1704. You can feel the wind coming behind me. But the fact that this was, the picture is perfect, great, Ruth. But that this was seated in perpetuity. They had a referendum here, too. 67, yeah, 19. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think the wind's going to get us for a second. 99 point something percent voted to stay with, with Britain. So, um, but it is interesting, of course. It does create the fact this is here is the reason we're spending money and staying in a hotel. Yeah, we've got a bunch, bunch more apes coming up here. So, so we're not going to go too quickly. We're going to, oh, there's a whole family. Apparently 25 different family units live together. And between 300 and 350 of these apes here. Um, but say they were probably into the, <laughs> decide, decide how close you want to get to them now. Um, look at this big one sitting up on the on that tree over here. No, it isn't, Bonnie. No, they so they voted 96% to stay. Oh, here's some babies. Um, to stay with with the European Union, but no, they have a they have their own passport here, but it is a British overseas passport, just like the Channel Islands. Um, so, you know, that's the, uh, that's the way it works now. And, and there is, I mean, it was a legitimate passport control. It was just friendly and easy, but it was still legitimate passport control. Um, I wanted to get up and show you some of their food, Bonnie, but, um, yeah, but we have sort of, whoo, just a little one, just jump over that gorgeous. All right. Now this one, <laughs> we're, <laughs> okay. We're gonna walk away for a second. <laughs> yeah, here I'm gonna say, uh, Sarah, there, <laughs> look back. <laughs> He's bye bye. Nice to see you. <laughs> so eventually, because we paid paid for the uh, the tickets here, yeah, we're backing up. That's right. We moved away. Um, yeah, chicken. <laughs> well, they they really do jump on your back. Here's these ones coming down now. Oh, look at this guy right. Oh, you gorgeous animal. Huh? Ooh. Oh, they're having a little conversation amongst themselves. Huh? It is an ambush. It feels very much like an ambush. Uh, but what we are going to do... Yeah, let's see if we can... Oh, I see. Yeah, lively and interesting. So this is why they say put your backpack on your front. Um, because they try and open them up. <laughs> but I don't have any monkey spray, Annie. <laughs> we are surrounded. Oh, they're really all up in the road now. Yeah. Oh, it is a roadblock. Well, eventually, I think we'll probably head up and start climbing again because we're going to want to do the, the big walk around the top anyway. So i just give you one more lovely view here of these spectacular animals. Aren't they gorgeous? Yeah, they're getting ready. Um, <laughs> this is why my dear friend Richard is carrying my backpack so that I don't suddenly drop the gimbal if someone <laughs> <laughs> which is which is why I get to uh I get to buy lunch. Yeah, look at these two now. They even are making a heart out of themselves. Thanks, Donna. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, I take it back. <laughs> oh, they were feeling cute and loving. Um Yeah, swim to Africa. <laughs> Lovers too. That's exactly what it is. Oh, they're spectacular though. So not so sweet now, Joe. Um yeah, that's that's true. It's funny. It's uh, the last time I had a, a real interaction with um, with monkeys was in uh, Thailand. So, um, so I'm gonna start heading back up because I know. Actually, let's see if we can get what the view is gonna be down here, and then we're gonna go and do the whole loop. Um, but there, uh, I just, I mean, I live so much in a place where we respect wildlife that is just so built into me to not approach the uh, the animals too closely. I mean, that's a um, oh, thanks, Lenny. Hi there. I didn't even notice you there. So we did see a lovely cat yesterday. Um, but yeah, I, I really feel very strongly about um, about not, of course, interacting with wildlife for as little as possible. And the fact that they're making a real effort to keep them on some gorgeous birds. That sounds so much like a, a sparrow to me. Um, thanks, Ruth. But it's, uh, yeah, they've made such an effort to do that. And I think it's wonderful. And I love the fact they turned this all into a nature reserve now. Uh, I do remember through. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, you don't want to be bitten by them. Look at all this growth. Now, limestone, of course, is funny when you, 
do tours with me in the Rockies, I talk so much about limestone because of course limestone is extremely porous and the roots get in. And so the trees actually amalgamate. The big difference is they don't have a freezing thaw here. Of course, today is 16 degrees down here, for example, really nice temperature. Although the wind is up, the wind is pretty wicked. Also, I see that they planted some eucalypts here. That's very interesting because eucalypts are very common to use to restabilize mountainsides, very common in South America as well. Um, although they do change the pH in the soil. So that's a, a big fundamental change down through here. But let's see if we can get you right down to the very south point here. Oh, we've got some more, more traffic in the middle of the road up here. <laughs> but yeah, this is what I'm just talking about when you see how limestone interacts with soil, right? Um, you This rock to work with and really the whole city is built with limestone as well except for the modern towers that have been what fabulous reception i have now all of a sudden this is great um hey trees so so i see a few other people are just joining on now so we are on the south side and we're up on the actual rock of gibraltar ladies and gentlemen so the british overseas territory ceded from the spanish crown in 1713 that all ties back to the Spanish War of Succession, and that was King Carlos II, who had just such terrible health problems, frankly, because of uh, because of inbreeding. It is said, I don't know how true it is, but of course I speak with a very South American voice when I speak Spanish. Here in Spain, people are familiar that the th sound exists. It is said, but to what extent that's fully true or not, I don't know. But it's said that he had, because his jaw was so malformed, that he had such a speech impediment that people took it up to pronounce the th sound around him. Look at these ones having a little nap. There we are, saying, I'm sleepy today. Thanks, honey. You gorgeous creatures. And it's a nice temperature for them. Now, there's a large population, of course, of these Burberry apes down across the water over in Morocco in the Atlas Mountain. But apparently their population, due to deforestation, are somewhat threatened. So this population here, which was probably introduced in the 8th or 9th century uh, from Morocco is actually very important just to keep the biodiversity of the species alive. So that's just another interesting element to it. And there's a little baby in the middle eating away just on branches, just eating. See the natural growth there. Thanks, Cindy. A bite to eat. It's an amazing thing almost together while we're in an extremely densely inhabited place. Um, no, I don't think it's dead meat, but uh, 33,000 people here in an area that's 2.7 square miles. Look at you, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful little creature. Oh, yeah. They're just, well, they're, I mean, they're. They're so connected, I think, to us as a species, isn't it? Um, oh, there's a, there's a big group up here now. <laughs> That's okay. Well, we will try and get there. No, try and get right down to our our most southerly view. Um, the really nice color. Oh, yep. There's about 350. They're saying in 25 family groups. So this would be a family group here. And whenever you see these big piles of metal things like this. They're all armaments from different times. Um, yeah, the primate, I like that. <laughs> but, uh, so we'll try and get by with the uh, with the bags here. Look at those little ones. Oh, you're gorgeous. Um, thanks, Cheryl. Here, I'll just uh, carry on around. Seconds. All right. Now, the Mediterranean steps are up ahead of us. <laughs> this one's just decided that he wants to, or she wants to, rest her chin there, just on the edge. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Look at the color of that sea, too. The Mediterranean, of course, is, is distinctly shallower, of course, than the Atlantic Ocean, as everyone knows. So you do get these lovely tones of the light in it. Um, 
There we are. St. Michael's Cave, by the way, they have concerts in there. I wouldn't get reception in there, so didn't go near it, but we're definitely going to hike on down there today, too. <clears throat> and that's, uh, that's a fun thing. Chin up. <laughs> I was doing chin ups on the beach yesterday morning. That was a nice thing to do. So I'm just going to keep. Um, yeah, Cheryl. Yes. And uh, yeah, so trying just to squeeze in as much visits. I don't know. Um, oh, <laughs> Ruth Richard's doing a, a great job. He's taking loads of photos. Richard's super fit. He loves hiking. Look at this fabulous pine. I'd call it a limber pine, but I'd be making that up. Lovely gnarly old tree right there. That'd be several hundred years. Of course, it's growing season would be 365 days. Whereas where I live, they get about mm, 62 days. And there's a bird. Oh, just pull up, Slim. <laughs> just getting some exercise. As we stopped, uh, stopped down in Marbella. Um, I just like to get, try and get some exercise, of course. Um, but it is interesting. All these paths that we have out here were all originally established as military routes. Leave tomorrow, Ginny. Yeah. I'm actually uh, flying up to London and then going north. I'm, uh, I'm feeling very honored to move, but I'm going for an early dinner with a friend who is really quite ill. And so I thought I could take the opportunity to catch up. We worked together for a long time and then I fly home. So, um, uh, well then Marbella, I know. So the, aside from running tours down here in Spain in 2008, nine, I did a, a graduate degree in Paris. I just did a master's of finance, believe it or not. And that's why I worked as an economist for exactly two years until I realized I didn't want to be an economist. Um, and then what I did is, uh, I uh, I wrote my thesis down here. Finn was, Finn was little, and we just came and hung out for a few months. But I found Marbella and all that. Um, you know, it's nice for a couple of days, but it's a little too much for me. I'd say for more than a couple of weeks. No, see, and I just won't have time to do any. I literally get off the plane, go up a little bit north of Market Harbor, so not north north, um, and then I'll zip down uh, the next day. Um, I would say based on this particular visit, I'm really glad I came back here because I just think Gibraltar, I like all these random things. And of course, my buddy Richard's been a tour guide. He was my boss when I started. So, you know, we always go for these kind of places and he hadn't been here before. So that's why I thought it'd be fun to do that. I thought though of going through Spain, I thought Seville just was even more fun than I found it in the past. And, uh, and Madrid was just looking lovely. So those would be both places. Um, yeah, I have never ever been to Ibiza, and it's and it's funny that because that was ceded to Spain oh, no. uh, at the same time that Gibraltar was was ceded to England in perpetuity, so it actually had yeah had been controlled. But um, I, yeah, I've never been to Mallorca, and it's funny back home in well in Canmore, there's a, a couple who have immigrated, but they're Mallorquin, and they just had a baby last year, and they speak Mallorquin at home, which is a, a sub dialect of Catalan. Those are interesting things. But, uh, but yeah, I was, oh, look at that. Oh, lovely growth coming out here. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot more travel to do, but I'm going home for a, a week and then I'm flying down to Toronto and running another tour down there. So, um, well, that, you know, that's kind of what I thought of Ibiza too, which uh, I think when I was living in the UK in the 90s, that's when a lot of that stuff was coming out about the clubbing culture there and the, yeah, and yeah, and that's just not, just not a, a thing that I ever grew up with. So, but I do hear that the south side of the island is just spectacularly beautiful. We have a couple of hundred meters and we can get all the way up to the top. But here we can show you a little bit more now of where people are actually living on the rock. I bet you those houses out around that point, per capita income here is over 75,000 pounds annually. So, so there is a lot of money down here. Although yesterday, as I say, we, we cornered this couple, <laughs> we, we, we bought them, bought them a pint, well, they sort of cornered us, eh? <laughs> but, um, but we bought them a couple of drinks and we're asking them all about living here and they've moved down, what did they say? 11 years, 11 years ago, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, there you go. That's good to have some architecture. Oh, there's actually a vehicle coming down the road. Great reception down here. So let me, uh, let me just try and lead you out to the far side is clearer and clearer and clearer now as we look across and there is once again Africa and I am honestly just a nerd for these kind of interesting things 
Um, well, they definitely have schools. Yesterday I saw the Hebrew one, and then the really nice younger fellow we talked to today said he grew up here, said, um, and does, does Ramadan, he said he speaks Arabic at home, but he said he actually is more comfortable in English, but his accent is, um, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting accent. Um, can I say eight miles, Jilly? Maybe on my back. It's uh, the, the way the water was moving this morning. We were watching one of the high speed ferries going out there, and I was thinking that would have been a sea sickness express go across. I'm talking about, yeah, the next stop. Oh, honestly, Jilly, don't tempt me. <laughs> well, there's that, or of course, I could cut around the back of these hills about 80 kilometers and get out to Cadiz, um, which isn't. There's not so much to see. That's a real port. But then you carry on to southern Portugal, right? And that's Faro, which is a little overdeveloped for my personal taste. But I find Lisbon a really fascinating city. Um, but yeah, Morocco, totally. Um, yeah, and really going up and over into Marrakesh, right? Up into, and the so-called, although they're not really using the term Berber anymore. Berber, no. I think that's that's considered more pejorative because it's still tied to the idea of barbarian and so forth, right? So, you know, lovely, warm culture i've only been to morocco twice in my life um but uh but it is uh yeah marrakesh just the colors and a very mercantile culture you know a lot of trading but personal safety it's funny that came up yesterday it was just like just like when i was in turkey too i feel personally so safe in places like that it's quite a little good uphill little walk yeah we're getting a um five i cheryl i'm nowhere near the airport i'm literally if you scan out on the map I'm literally the other end. Um, if I see it circling around, but I will say this afternoon, I'm doing a different presentation and I'll, I'll see if I, if I walk across the, uh, the, yeah, the runway, but I will try and do it very least a YouTube video one coming in. The trees are gorgeous. The park and clearly locals come up here and get their exercise because we've seen what seven or eight people biking up and I can see why that's a, a good worthwhile thing to do. You know, I just, Seeing no, I don't see any plane, but they have to come in from around this side. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll see, and then they yeah, then they descend really quite quickly. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, Richard's carrying both his backpack and mine, so so I owe Richard big time for for this one. Um, yeah, so the botanic yeah, David, you. The botanical gardens are right down by Europa Point there. And that's also actually where I was mentioning yesterday when the, the Gibraltars found a way to allow the Jewish population to stay. Very interesting idea by saying uh, they can't leave till they pay their taxes, but they weren't being taxed. But there's the Jewish cemeteries right down at the base of where I am now so that it couldn't be seen from Spain. Um, as, you know, as we put in one of the posts in the campervan group, you know, 1492 was a, was a tough year and uh, they uh, you know, essentially expelled everyone. Uh, the very top gate's gonna be closed, but we can make it up. I've got, I just have a minute or two. Oh, no. Uh, oh, maybe it is open up top, but I do wanna show you this. Because this is where you start to see the giant Swiss cheese of this area. These are all fortifications. Um, nice. But have a look at this. British forces Gibraltar. So they really mean this too. So the air defense, I keep looking up to see if I see an airplane, but not actually. sorry, there's five today. Yeah. But someone just said there's one landing in a couple of minutes, but again, we're just nowhere near the, uh, the airport. So, well, Sam, it's, I'm, I'm glad you made it at least for a little view because it's a pretty remarkable place where we are here. And uh, we're getting up pretty much to the highest point. There's now there is a rugby field down in the distance. Also, we don't quite see it, but there's a huge mosque down there. Hi, Ruth. Huge mosque down there. And that was a gift from Saudi Arabia in 1997. Um, so, but it's a huge, in fact, you can just catch a tiny glimpse of the minaret um, just over on the left-hand side, but that's Europa Point. So that's the very southern point. Let me zoom in for one second, just for fun. Thanks, Bridget. I just to zoom in right down there. That is as far south as you can get, at least in this side of Europe, mainland Europe. Um, and like we said, we were stamped out of Europe to come to the bottom of Europe, <laughs> which, is a, which is a pretty random feeling to have. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my time is quickly passing.
Um, the plane is late, you know. I tell you what, though, honestly, either today or tomorrow morning, I might even get uh, our plane landing. So um, I think I'm on the 11-something flight. Oh, this is lovely. So here we are up by the summit here. And yeah, we did. We, we drove in. And uh, um, we <clears throat> there was a there was a, a lineup or something. They weren't letting people. Thanks, Sandy. They weren't letting people uh, walk through for the moment. I don't know. It was like car time. It wasn't yesterday. We're done. So then we let. There's one guy just waiting to come in. So we said, "I'll hop on in and drove through with us." But he had a he had a, a British passport, Gibraltar passport. Um, so that was that was interesting as well. And so yeah, we have to return the car here. Um, and we have it returned it sometime today but it was fun to come and drive around um and it was uh yeah a little bit a little bit different but we have actually used up our time ladies and gentlemen so hey be merci a toi natalie gracias a todo el mundo toda tu penanches cama thanks sam it's it's uh i i toyed with maybe 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 putting up a very last minute one hey anita hi there very last minute one tomorrow morning if I timed it out for a um a plane coming in, just a short one, but uh but I won't promise that. I just wanna see how the day goes. Um I'm glad you enjoyed the tour. It's funny how much we were able to actually squeeze in on this one. So um so there's my buddy Richard who's done all all the hard <laughs> with with all of my personal baggage. <laughs> but um what we do want to say is peace and love, everyone. Stand here, and I could do I could do a two hour lecture just on the military history here, and I just keep remembering that quote from Charles de Gaulle: "The graveyards are full of indispensable men." So, uh, I'd much rather take a. Well, it's hard being a pacifist, but you know, it's a it's a tough it's a tough world we live in. So, peace and love to all of you. Um, and oh, you're welcome, Jennifer. This is such an interesting place out here. But uh, thanks, Helen. Uh, Richard's from London. He's London, London, London. Yeah. As I say, Richard was my, my boss in the 90s when I was 12 years old and started working. <laughs> anyway, leave you with a final view of the Atlantic Ocean out there and the African continent down to the south. Thank you, everyone. Big hugs to all of you. Happy Sunday. Um, in fact, we should do something religious on Sunday. I'll, uh, I'll take a collection. <laughs> but that note, thank you all for your support as well. Cause it's... It's actually been quite expensive coming here, but it's fun. So, all right. Big hugs. Lots of love.